Hello and welcome to yet another video. Today we have a B450 Gaming K4 from Azrock, a Fatality one. This is quite nice des um, desktop mainboard. This is an AM4 board. This is ri uh, Ryzen. Let's get this unpacked and let's see what is wrong with it. And here we have our beautiful board now. This B, as you can see, B450 Gaming K4. This is interesting form factor. This is quite small in like the width but it is tall, like large. And this board came to me for a BIOS flash that wasn't successful. So our BIOS chip is right there. As you can see, we have the header, the programming header right next to it. And the first thing that I would want to see is if this board has any way to uh, flush it offline, like without the processor or anything. For this, you would look at the IO, if there's a button anywhere there. And if there's not a one at the IO, you would look at the bottom to see if there's like a Q flash plus or something like that, a button for it. But as far as I can see, this board does not support any kind of flashing without the processor and without this thing booting up. So that seems to not be an option for us this time, which means we will need to try different processors in here and we will need to try if we can erase the BIOS or reset the BIOS uh, with the battery, but I think the person would have already tried this. And if that all doesn't work, we're going to program the SPI or the ROM chip by desoldering it and plugging it into computer and putting new BIOS onto him. But let's try now to plug a CPU in here. We're going with our 2200G. And I will be back as soon as everything is built up. And now we are fully built up. We have the 2200G here. We have post cards uh, card here and there. And there's no post LEDs on this one, sadly. But I'm going to tell you what I will see on the post, on those post cards. And let's see for the power consumption. I'm going to turn it on. Now we're going to connect the negative clamp and now the positive clamp. Uh, let's adjust it a little bit and let's see and we have oh, a little bit of rising for because of the LEDs probably around 100 milliamps pl uh, plus or minus going up and down let's see we now need a power button and our speaker and now with those attached let's try to turn it on and we get power consumption of 1.3 amps it is not static it is jumping a little bit. On the postcards, I actually can't see any progress. Only on the PCIe card, I can see a PCI reset being taken off and being applied over and over again. So I think this has actually a bias problem. So let's turn this off again. It turns off. Let's see now. We're going to, okay, it started by itself. Let's turn it on off by the power supply. Let's remove this BIOS battery now. And now let's see, is there any header that is called a uh, clear CMOS or something? Yeah, there is. We're going to probe this header. I'm going to, I'm using tweezers just to hold it on to those two pins. And we're going to wait a few seconds. We're also going to push the power button a few times. And what we're also going to do is we're going to short the contacts of the battery just to be very sure. And now this should be enough. Let's turn on our power supply again. And now let's hit the power button and let's see. Still getting no postcodes, still getting about the same amperage. So I don't think that anything will change unless we flash the BIOS actually. Um, I'm going to try different processes in here, see if they actually start uh, any any postcodes. If that doesn't help, we're going to go over to flash to chip. So we didn't have any change with the other processors. So now we see our BIOS chip. Let's clean it a little bit so we know what kind of chip this is. So this is an MX twenty five U one twenty eight seventy three F. Let's punch it that into Windows. Uh, into Windows, into Google, and let's see if this is a 3.3 .3 volt chip or if this 
is an 1.8 volt chip. So I've just looked it up and this is a 1.8 volt chip, meaning we need to use the adapter to flash this chip. So I've now flashed our BIOS chip. This took approximately like 15 or 20 minutes. We're now getting the BIOS chip off and putting it back onto its right, uh, rightful place. So you now see me putting on the chip back again, our freshly flashed BIOS and also cleaning it up. As you can see, some solder pads had to be cleaned up a little bit, had a little bit too much solder. I just went over it with the soldering iron once again. And after that, I tried to actually boot the board up because I, I was very sure that the board was ready, but it actually didn't boot. It actually had the same behavior as before. And then I went on my way to physically inspect this board. And would you believe it? I was lied to yet again. This board probably did not have uh, any BIOS issue. This board was physically damaged. Can you see this resistor right here? It is broken. Half of it is, is missing as you can see. From about there down to here it is cracked and it's missing the half. <sighs> Who knows, maybe someone did actually do a BIOS update and wanted to swap out the CPU in the same terms and then did the damage and thought this was a bias issue and not his damage but as we can see this resistor is now is dead so I will need to find a board view for this or a schematic so they can see what kind of resistor needs to be placed in there and now we are in our board view software and if we go up here, we see the row of resistors that we had and it was the fourth one from the bottom, which is this one, which is a 10 ohm resistor that we need that is directly connected to the CPU. Okay, and the other side gets, uh, it goes to the SL, so the VRM controller. So we probably didn't have V core. That was probably missing then. So let's replace that resistor with the 10 ohm one and let's see if this board behaves any differently after that. And now we have our original BIOS installed again and we got the board built up a little bit and let's see if this now will post again and the current consumption looks very healthy. Looks good jumping up and down just as we want to see it. And let's see if we actually get a picture out of this. Because of a different bias, this probably has to reset once or twice. And as we can see, we have a BIOS screen. So the, uh, the original BIOS was not faulty the original BIOS was working, so it wasn't a BIOS update that failed, but it was the knocked off resistor that uh, caused the problem. And as you can see, we are booting into Windows through our NVMe SSD already. So I think this boss is fixed. I'm going to do the usual procedure that I have of testing the ethernet. I can already see that it's working. Test, uh, do, doing some Linpack passes, doing some graphical te uh, tests, testing the first PCIe slot and so on and so forth. But I'm not going to bore you with this on this board. If there's anything to be seen, I will show it to you, but I don't think there will be. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. Yet another customer who presumably knew the answer that this was a quick and easy fix. But as you could see, never trust a customer, even though the customer is always right. <laughs> Yeah, so be cautious out there what you buy, what you trust of the eBay listings and happy fixing. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.